I've made many Sterling engines and they work very reasonably well, but I've really got to the bottom of why they work and how to improve their function. To this end I've decided to build a test bed engine and the key thing I wanted to be able to do was separate the drive from the power side of the engine to the displacer and that's the job of that tooth belt you can see in this drawing. So here's an early version of the test bed. Decided to make some changes. Here's some work in progress. Um, the um, big end. The slitting saw there. Splitting the big end. This shows the balance crank. Uh, I was using some plumber blocks at that stage and the displacer chamber. I've been asked to show uh, the extent of the progress on my uh, test bed engine. Um, so there it is. It's uh, been a bit uh, one step forward and two steps back at some stages. I've had to rebuild the chassis because the original way I got the chassis mounted didn't give me enough clearance for the flywheel and um, also I needed to uh, replace the disc crank with a more conventional crank there so that I could hang things on both ends of the crank. Um, so that sort of slowed things down a bit because making a a balance crank like that is a bigger job than a disc crank. Um, I'll talk about the hot end in a moment and the cold end um, and the functioning down here. Um, but as you can see it's, it's quite a sizeable piece. This is the hot end of the engine. Uh, at its heart there's a block of aluminium being bored. Um, the holes there are for where it mounts onto the flange of the uh, displacer chamber. It's got uh, a bit of cladding round here separated by these ceramic uh, standoff pillars and all of this space will be filled with uh, ceramic wool insulation. Um, it will be heated by these uh, 24 volt 40 watt capsule heaters that will fit into there like that. There's four of those so that gives me 160 watts of heat input. Um, they're certainly good to 400 degrees. Uh, they probably go a bit beyond because I've heard of people with uh, 3D printers where they've malfunctioned and it's melted the aluminium block. Um, so control obviously is an issue with this and um, I'll be using uh, thermistors to uh, measure, the, oh, sorry not thermistor, thermocouple to measure the temperature of the block and use a PID controller to uh, can control the temperature. <coughs> There's a little aluminium back here again this will all be full of insulation and that will fit on there. Um, I want to know that the heat is going through the engine, hence the insulation, um, because uh, another part of the system is the cold end and the cold end is going to be water cooled. So the water will come in here, pass over this uh, platinum resistance thermometer, so there's a platinum resistance thermometer there, uh, it goes through some cooling passages in here, there's quite a lot of cooling passages in there actually, there's quite a big drilling job to drill those, 
and parts out here uh, flowing over a second platinum resistance thermometer. This will all be insulated so that uh, by knowing the temperature difference of the inlet and outlet water and the water flow I'll be able to measure the amount of heat being rejected by the engine. You can also see the, uh, the power cylinder, that's a bronze power cylinder, cast iron piston. The flywheel is a 6mm aluminium disc, it was the biggest I could cut from an 8 inch square of aluminium alloy. Um, the reason for such a big flywheel is that it's going to be the um, eddy current braking disc. So it's got three jobs really. The flywheel job, the eddy current braking disc for the dynamometer and it will also have stuck on this face here um, the encoder disc for the um, optical encoder that's going to measure the crank angle in real time. You can see the uh, tooth belt that drives the second shaft here. It's uh, 60 tooth pulleys here. Um, it's all running in ball bearings. Um, 60 tooth pulleys either side. So you get one to one on that shaft there. And that's where the crank will be that drives the displacer backwards and forwards. Um, the idea is that once I've established the engine works as a conventional gamma engine, I can undo this belt here, this will come off, and I can replace it with a stepper motor. And knowing the crank angle, I can have a microcontroller that will determine where the uh, displacer should be and send signals to the stepper motor placing the displacer in the right place. So I'll be able to have almost any form of motion I can conceive um, of the displacer. And for instance, one of the things would be to get the displacer down to the, say, hot end as quickly as possible and leave it there for a period of time for the temperature to uh, move into the working gas. And then at the appropriate moment, whip it back down the other end. Um, so to hopefully improve uh, temperature exchange within the displacer chamber. But uh, that's all to be seen. That's, that's what this engine's all about, really. Um, it's an investigation engine. Um, and uh, so there we have it.